Hey guys, good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? My apologies uh, for running a little bit late. Um, the uh, well, definitely wasn't. It definitely continues to be one of those nights. <laughs> but um, thanks for your patience, guys. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, no. This uh, yesterday, uh, I have family in town, so um, because of the because uh, the funeral was yesterday for my in-law. It was a really uh, my mother-in-law. Uh, really, really great, uh, uh, awesome service. Let me move my com camera over here. Really good service overall, and uh, and it was a really beautiful service. Really, really honored her in a way that I thought was like really wonderful. And um, but you know, uh, my wife and I we come from pretty big families for the most part. So um, there's like a saying they say like uh, you don't see your family unless it's a wedding or a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no, there's nothing in between that. And so it's, it seems to hold true for most, uh, for most situations and families. I don't know if that's you or not, but um, definitely was a family reunion. And with COVID, it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot, it was a lot. So you're trying to host, you know, and be with people and family. And then at the same time, you gotta, you know, you gotta go through the motions, right? Uh, go through the grieving process. So uh, needless to say, it was very exhausting. Uh, it was it was not it was good it was beautiful it was memorable um you know she was definitely a super like happy lady so it was like hey like let's celebrate honor her life right it's like it's we're sad but you know she would want she would want people to be like more festive um than anything um than anything else so that's kind of the um the consensus so so we're looking at that, and um, and my folks are in town, so uh, they're they're literally like here and connecting, and so it gets a little bit crazy and stuff like that. So bear with me this week. Um, there's uh, there's definitely a lot going on. Um, I am very tempted to go asynchronous on Thursday, so um, just to kind of give everybody some time to like work independently, and then also allow me to have some time to like host family and things like that. So there is, I'm like 50% there in terms of like possibly going asynchronous on Thursday to allow everyone to work on their conceptual designs and also their um, for packaging and also in the um, t-shirt design space. So we'll see how, how far we get today. And, um, and Thursdays normally are, are definitely work-based related days. So we'll see how that goes for Thursday. So we might just go uh, asynchronous on Thursday um, just to kind of allow for everything that we do for today. So uh, just kind of throwing it out there, okay? And also, um, if I had to refer to Canvas, um, I'm barely uploaded, as you probably saw in some of the messages, the video for today or last week's uh, video interview with Aaron Atchison. So, um, so if you're looking to repeat that uh, interview that we did on Thursday, it was, um, it is, it should be now online. So in uh, GDSM 164, um, in our Canvas page, it should be under interview video uh, right here in the center for day 20 technically and we should see here uh, the interview interview with Aaron Atchison at Forum Design and so that's last Thursday's class so thank you guys for your patience and um, checking that out um, definitely now that I've had a few days to kind of reflect a little bit about this event um, I would say that critical thinking was definitely um, something that I'm heavily thinking more of now these days as a result and, and communication skills. Um, and so just being able to connect the dots as it were, I think is gonna be like a really uh, important tool. And that's just something that I'm definitely thinking about. And then also allotting some time for inspiration and kind of sharing and connecting. Um, definitely inspired by that. Um, obviously I think I lost my 30 minute, first 30 minutes of class window um, to do it but I am definitely motivated to launch that. And I think I'm targeting for next week, um, just allotting like, you know, obviously I have to show up at 6.30, right? And, and allotting those 30 minutes to kind of connect and get everybody set up. So I feel like that's gonna be helpful in sharing and just kind of getting some pieces set up and everything of the sort. So um, looking at that as, a, as definitely a, a highlight and then just kind of getting back to the warm ups and starts and things of that sort. So that's there, we have the video already there. And then for packaging design, that's also available as well. Um, so 
uh, that would be uh, interview uh, video as well, day 20. So feel free to also click onto that as well for all of us in packaging design. So that's available uh, for you too. Um, and then we also added some week 11 uh, domains. So um, before I get into it, let me just go ahead and um, just kind of open up the breakout rooms so then that everyone can kind of get connected. Tonight for, di for digital illustration, we're gonna be um, looking at your Mickey Mouse uh, illustrations and seeing what those designs are looking like so far. So we're gonna kind of rebase there and then we're gonna come back to t-shirt designs and look a little bit more closely on um, uh, files that we could download and uh, downloadable assets that we can connect. So there's that. And then for um, packaging design, uh, we're gonna get some time to catch up with some of those presentations that were done last week or Tuesday, I should say. Um, and then we're gonna take some time to kind of review those concepts and see how, what changes we made, modifications, and talk a little bit about how we're gonna be uh, possibly looking at Adobe Dimension as a tool to kind of uh, overlay some of our um, designs. So we're looking at that as well. So we're probably gonna be branching out a little bit to some experimental software or basically some um, brand visual, they call it brand visualization software, which is really a fancy word for <clears throat> um, uh, 3D modeling of a product using graphic assets. Um, for packaging design. So we'll be looking at that uh, for tonight as well, okay? So uh, definitely a lot of good things going on. Let me go ahead and begin by opening up um, that breakout room so that we can see first. So let me go ahead and generate that and get that going. And then we will um, connect the groups and get us going from, uh, from there. So let's take a peek and Ah, okay. And then we'll get it out and see how's it going. So hopefully you guys had a good weekend. I know I'm kind of like jumping in, but hopefully you guys are doing okay. And definitely um, allowing yourself some time to connect. So, oh, nope, one second guys, actually. My apologies, guys. Let me go ahead and take a moment there to fix that. Okay. Okay. My, give me a second there, guys. I think the breakout room was created by Miss. Okay, guys, my apologies. Let me, let me take a moment here because right now we're having some issues with the breakout room. So, Okay, stand. Okay, I'm having some technical issues. So stand by for just a second. Um, because now we're having additional itch issues. Uh, close manage participants. That's not what I want. And let me take a moment there. Guys, my apologies. We have one too many breakout rooms. And uh, right now it's um, auto creating rooms and it shouldn't be allowing to do that. Um, okay, so, so sorry guys, my apologies. Let me see if I can actually regenerate this um, um, and see what that looks like. So 
Allow participants to choose room. No, allow participants to return to main session any time. Yes, room will go into breakout and notify me auto close breakout after 120 minutes. So we got that going on and recreate and set that up. Yeah, it's, it's, for some reason, um, we have this auto generated thing going on and that's the feature that I was looking for. So we made an update and that's what happened. So my apologies. So packaging designers, and then this is uh, lot one. And okay, now we should be able to get everybody into the room and, um, and connect and get you all there, okay? So perfect. Okay, so that should fix that. Okay, and we're gonna get that going. And I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Santa, Thank no, you. I found shopping. Oh, you did, did you? A That's a unicorn. Yeah, it looks great, buddy. All right. Unicorns, I can draw you a unicorn, okay? Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's take a peek here. Okay, so um, let's talk about the t-shirt design for just a quick second. And that way we can kind of get, get us set up. I wanna open up the presentation file so then we can kind of see how everything's gonna flow overall in, um, in the class. So I'll open that up and we'll get that going. Okay, so while that, that's opening up, um, just a couple of things I wanted to check with digital illustration. And that is the Mickey Mouse illustration. How many of you guys have, um, and maybe move some of these elements out of the way so it doesn't like overwhelm and get that there. I'm gonna move this down over here and uh, situate some of the files here so we can get that going. So let's take a look. Okay, so just out of curiosity, um, just the Mickey file in and of itself, like how many of you guys have, uh, just by, sh just show a little thumb emo emojis, have already sort of uh, completed the illustration and you feel like you have a pretty good grasp of it. Um, just out of curiosity, just wanted to see like how many guys feel like you've gotten it um, or completed it. I'll, we'll start off with that. How many of you guys have completed the tracing of that particular image? Probably. Okay, a few of us. How many of you guys have um, are about halfway through? Just curious to know where we are with that. About halfway through the retracing of the um, about about the image. Okay, so. Okay, so then in terms of elements, um, what are some things that are still left for, fo for most of us? Um, and how many of you guys are still working on the black base? Just kind of curious um, here. Like how many of you guys are still working on the black base in and of itself? Just that outline, which is here and you're, and you're literally on this stage right now. Anyone still here and still working on this particular outline? Okay, so we're good. Okay, so we got a question. Uh, Chris, do you have a question or were you just kind of saying that you're on the black base here? Uh, you could type it in the chat or voice it in if that's the case. Okay, so we'll, okay, so you're on the black base there. Okay, is where we're at. And just finishing the face. Okay, so that's, so it looks like we had a couple of folks still working on the graphic and getting the bases down. So it sounds like, because Thursday I know we did the interview, so then we still are on this particular level. And this is kind of the breakdown and I just kind of wanted to open it up. Finish the Mickey, don't, uh, I don't know how to submit. Okay, so here's how it's gonna play out guys and um, for, the, for the graphic, okay? So the idea here is that we are going to take this graphic, okay?
Oh, Amy, let me go ahead and put you in the breakout room. Sorry. Um, I completely forgot. I am uh, somewhat distracted this evening. Okay, so there we go. Okay. So, so we're at the black base. So some of us are here at that black base. So here's the, here's how it sort of flows overall. Okay. So in this particular project, um, typically the way it rolls is that we can take this graphic and we apply Mickey to your, to a t-shirt design. Okay. Now, most of the time you could do that and we could, and the reason I kind of go that route is that you do the tracing, create the outline, create the graphic, right? And, excuse me, and then from there, we go to like the, the base of the t-shirt and start designing sort of the framing device, okay? And if you kind of are, don't know where I'm going with that or where I'm tracking, uh, let me just kind of go back a little bit of like, just like sort of like the principles when it comes to like a t-shirt design um, generally, okay? So in this area, okay? So ultimately the goal is to kind of create a Mickey shirt or a Disney themed shirt, okay? Now, vintage now means 80s, 90s, 60s, 70s, 50s. It really is up to you what era you want to kind of reflect, right? Or season. I mean, um, whether it's Halloween or Christmas related, it really has to have like a theme to it is ultimately where we're going with that, right? And most of the time, students will use um, a little and most of the time what we have here is your t-shirt design right and most students will use the mickey that you have in front of you right now so like they take that and they transfer it and convert it okay now um i got a couple of emails over the weekend saying oh can we possibly change the the the, the pose and the answer is uh, yes you can so you can definitely change your pose if you wish, as long as you're following the advanced trace method. So normally what I, I typically like to do is like, I like to do one quick run through of like the whole image so that everyone can get a feel for how to trace and, and put it all together. And, and then from there, they kind of create their own graphic or kind of build from there. So here's what we're gonna do. And just to kind of open it up for the sake of time. If you have this graphic and you're feeling like, you know what, professor, I think I got a grasp of this. And I totally understand where I'm going with this. I know, you know, ultimately this tracing element. And if you want to switch it to a different pose, you can, okay? Um, so you can definitely change it to a different pose as you can um, if you wish in the project. And then from here, um, and just to kind of go back into where we were with Illustrator, right? Like, you know, um, like this, this was a, a tracing of like a Mickey graphic. And I pulled that one off, retraced it um, in Illustrator, and then I added some other elements like a mask and all that stuff just to kind of relate to the mask. So um, for those that didn't see that, this, this is like a little Mickey mask here. But basically what I did was is that I, um, this is comprised of a trace of a Mickey following those same elements and methods that, I've, that we were kind of reviewing before, okay? So there's a black base, right? And there is um, an outline there. So let me go ahead and increase that a little bit. So, and then we have uh, a closed vector object of the eyes, closed vector of sort of like the overhead brow, nose, tongue, mouth, even the gloves are separate. So everything's like an illusion if you think about that, right? And so each the each and every one of these elements are basically just redrawn closed vector objects, okay? But it all starts with a black base, okay? So if you feel like you wanted to redraw the black base, you can, and uh, or excuse me, um, or if you would wanted to redraw a Mickey character of your choice, you can. Um, but whatever that theme is, right? You might have to add elements. So, right? So in this one, obviously, I grab some elements like a, a mask and I trace that as well. And these are all separate elements, right? Because in Illustrator, I, the idea is to try to get as much of a separate, uh, as much closed vector objects as possible um, to kind of put the design together, if that makes sense, okay? So everything is a closed vector object 
And if you were to see them as like these as standalones, you would not think that that was a mask or you would not think that this would play like a visor for anything, right? Or a face mask of some sort, or even the highlights, right? Um, ultimately, everything that's happening here is, is, uh, is just an illusion, right? Um, they're all these closed vector objects that have been cut, that are basically look or resemble something else that add up to create a graphic, right? And so that's kind of what these elements are made of. So all these are just closed vector objects that have been traced, right? And I ultimately found a font and brought in that font to kind of build it. But for uh, the sake of time, it's like, okay, well, you can totally create your own graphic. Um, this is kind of like a, you know, Ghost Mickey. This is another kind of popular character, same idea. Um, in this particular graphic, I went like kind of Halloween theme. Uh, this is sort of like uh, I stole the feet from like a Hello Kitty shoe. So that's kind of like a Hello Kitty Converse graphic that I found floating around on the internet uh, from Hello Kitty. So I took that, traced that out. And this is actually uh, a lot simpler, um, which is a black base. And so we have a black base here. And then these are a series of just closed vector objects that kind of mimic the representation of like the front of a shoe or sneaker the tie and the tie and everything of that sort but it's really just a square with a rounded corner to create that image right so we have that happening in there too so you know at the end of the day um this is a black base right i even went a little bit further than that um i drew two circles or i drew a circle and i copy and pasted that and then drew that base and created that image and then Mickey is literally a, or this Mickey sort of like ghost element, kind of like the sheet, is a closed vector object, right? A little bit of a black outline, technically. Eyes are closed vector. I kind of stole it from that other graphic. And then for the arms, I just stole, I just stole this from another particular graphic. Actually, that's a copy. I'm going to ungroup it. And this is... Um, a series of sort of a black trace of the arm, right? White closed vector. Like literally this, this black is that base, right? And we're just creating that illusion of, of that glove. So everything's sort of like a, a layer on top of a layer on the top of a layer to kind of create that image. So, but they're all pieced together in such a way to create that illusion, right? So this is kind of cool because you can technically take one thing, pull from another thing and add them together to create your graphic. And all it is, is me just saying, um, I'm just arranging them so that they're either in the front or the back of the image. Because when you're tracing something, all you're saying is that you're arranging it to the front or to the back. So that's literally how I'm kind of piecing it together. And then we, and then uh, towards the end, we download a font and kind of add that font and piece it and put it together in that element. Okay, so that's kind of the uh, the idea behind it, right? So I did a couple of variations too. I copy and paste. I did kind of like the LA Mickey, so he's kind of doing like the little like CA, you know. Uh, kind of like a California thing. And this was kind of like an LA version of that that I kind of experimented with. And here's the kind of the Hello Kitty that I kind of sort of uh, traced from a little bit. It's not exact, but I just did a quick rendition of it just to see how I can get it. And then I just kind of uh, pasted onto the t-shirt and selected sort of the colors um, of the t-shirt to kind of piece that together, okay? So um, whether it's one pose or another pose, it all starts with that black base, okay? So, so does that make sense overall in terms of just like how to trace it? Um, I'm really curious, um, how many of you guys are actually interested in changing your pose altogether? Not, not the one I gave you, but really now, now that you're thinking about it, you would want to change your pose and you would actually uh, grab a different pose, trace that pose following the same method and then building it from there. How many of you guys would prefer to go that direction in the interest of saving time only because you know we're obviously tracing one Mickey and it's going a little bit there. Okay, so a couple of us did uh, say okay to that. If that's you, 
go for it, right? Oscar, Francesca, go for it. You guys are totally okay to go about that direction, okay? For the rest of the class, it looks like you guys are gonna stick with the uh, the supply uh, image. Is that Does that sound about accurate for the rest of the class? Like you guys wanna stick with this pose and you're gonna move forward with this and design sort of a t-shirt around that. Does that sound like most of us here? And if that is, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji. Okay, perfect. Okay, so then um, before I kind of go, I'll move on regarding the backgrounds and the fonts. Um, does anyone have any questions specifically about the tracing of the image that I can go over? Uh, there. Oh, Jonathan, it, it'll all direct you to the, it's, it should be on the activity for week nine and 10. And it's, um, but I'll show you there in just a few moments there. Okay. And now actually I'll supply that with you too. Okay. Okay. So does anyone have a, a specific question regarding how to trace a certain part of Mickey? Let's just start there. Like uh, maybe it's the eye or maybe it's the, the shoe or maybe there's a specific glove. I'm curious to know um, uh, there. Oh, the square pancakes that control the layers. Yeah. And then we can take a look at that too as well. Uh, yeah, the layering is another factor as well. Okay. So everyone feels super comfortable on the tracing of Mickey. It, just, it sounds like we just need time. Does that sound about accurate? Like everyone just needs time for that tracing to happen. Does that sound about right for everyone there? They just need that extra time for tracing? And if that's you, maybe a little thumbs up emoji on the tracing aspect of it. Okay, so refresher on how to group the shapes. Okay, um, need the time. Okay, sounds good. And teacher, just wanted to make sure if I'm at the right track. Okay, so, so Elizabeth, I wasn't sure if it's just time or if you're agreeing with refresher on how to group the shapes. So um, just how to, oh, okay. Cool. So here's how. Here's what we'll do. Um, if there is, we're gonna narrow it down that much more uh, to the breakout room. Okay. I think this will be this will be good. Um, uh, for those, so for those of us that need time, we'll leave the main classroom for for tracing and uh, tracing time. Okay. Um, for more specific questions, I um will I'll start shifting to the one on one break, breakout room. So one on one with me. And we'll answer those specific questions that you might have regarding certain elements and designs, things of that sort, okay? So I think that'll be helpful because then we can have folks designing or tracing and then the other folks kind of placing it together, okay? So we'll do it in that regard, okay? Now, um, and then that way we'll kind of piece it together. Now, just a couple of things regarding additional assets, okay? Now, where are we heading with this um, in terms of the graphics? The new stuff is this, and I just want to just kind of brush this over so you kind of see where I go. Now, you notice that when it comes to a t-shirt design, a lot of things can be um, traced images that we find, and a lot of things can be like font related, okay? I actually um, don't recreate all the elements of my designs, believe it or not. So um, if I am trying to like piece together a design, um, I'll direct you to the canvas. I actually have uh, a repository or a few sites that I'd like to go to where there's specifically elements that I can actually download. And so I want to direct you to that a little bit too. Um, now, mo most of the time, professionals would literally trace their elements and their designs, okay? Um, and I totally get that and I totally agree with that. And I, and I encourage that all the way when you have eight hours a day, okay? But if you're starting out or you're having a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a pinch on time, um, I actually have a, a couple of resources where I go to where I actually find free vectors and free files of drawing, drawings that have been created. And I'm going to pull that up right now inside of my um, canvas. So I'll give you a little peek into that. So, so, so if I go to the assignment here, Okay, our vintage shirt design. Um, I have all the resources built into here, right? And so I think, um, let me take a look here. So Jonathan, that, this is where you would find in red the pencil exercise, which is the Mickey, that tracing. So if you click onto that, you'll get the, um, 
pen tool, advanced pen tool exercise. And that'll basically show you uh, where that Mickey drawing is. And then you can kind of trace that. So that's there in Canvas. OK, um, so you can uh, refer to that and you're, you're all set. Now, in, um, in, this, in this particular posting of the assignment, I actually have something here called free vectors or repository to add your design and uh, fonts where I like to go to as well. I like to kind of say fonts for last, depending. Um, but what I normally like to go to are these links below. So we'll start with like a free pick. Now, there are a lot of resources out there where you can technically like find um, vector files that already exist. So free pick is one that um, that is uh, that's available. What's free pick? Um, why is it giving me? Oh, the accept cookies. Yeah, free pick is a, is a is a repository or site that where you can find not only stock photos but Photoshop files and vectors that are available to you. So if you're doing a design, um, you might actually find vectors that are in existence out there that you can kind of bring into your design, right? Um, again, a lot of times what most people will do is that they will they will literally kind of trace the image and put it out there, right? Now, if we had you know, maybe like a week at eight hours a day, that would totally be the case, right? But obviously for this project, I just, you know, we don't have as much time. So what I normally do is I say, okay, guys, um, if you have the time to trace it, then trace it like we do with the Mickey. But as you're finding out, Mickey takes a while. So imagine drawing a tree or any other element. It'll, that'll take a while too. In this instance, um, what, uh, what I would normally do is that I would look at some vectors and see what's available. And then I would kind of derive some of those elements and bring them into it. So if I was doing something in relation to, um, let's say, I don't know, Halloween, right? And I type it in um, and I actually, uh, well, I'll get like um, a, a good amount of different vectors and files that are out there that I can kind of bring into the mix, right? So if I want a theme, I can pull up a theme and kind of go that direction. If I wanted to be real specific, I can go to all resources and say that I want specifically vectors um, and search. And I was uh, looking for vectors, then it would filter it according to vector files, which are illustrator friendly. And then I can kind of bring it into, into the designs there. So there are many collections that are available out there. And I typically like to do this for like backgrounds um, and like sort of like highlighted elements just to kind of, um, Add a little bit more pizzazz, a little bit more, a little bit more of a feel to my, to my design, and so you can do some really cool things um, when it when it comes to like available vectors and things of that sort. Again, you know these are technically royalty free, and so you can bring them into the design and kind of go in that direction. So when I look at this, I'm always thinking like in terms of design, like what's you know what can be typographically interesting. You know, if I'm thinking about those principles of t-shirt design that I was referring to, in my head, I'm, I'm literally thinking to myself, okay, you know, um, if I'm looking for, and I'll pull it up again, the presentation so you can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of open it up and use my window here. If I just think about just these, um, the presentation principles that are also found on this uh, on this post, right? Like, so taking any shirt that's out there, and I just think about like what makes this design, the rules that go into the t-shirt design, right? Those are those principles that I was kind of referring to. I'm already thinking to myself, is there something that could work as a frame, right? Like that can frame my graphic so that it sits kind of like an island on my shirt, right? Um, and I'm and I'm assuming that these are just uh, screen printed onto the front of the shirt, not the all over pattern stuff, because it's a similar process. But now you have to like cut it, cut and sew together the T-shirt if it's an all over pattern technically. So we're just talking about like front screen printed T-shirt design, right? Which is typically like the most cost effective and popular for most people, right? I'm thinking about a framing device. Like, man, you know, where's the where's Mickey gonna sit in a frame? Like, is he gonna be? like framed around a certain graphic is all. So I'm thinking about that in the back of my mind. Like I, I need something to frame the character, right? Um, obviously Mickey's gonna be the focus. So I know what my focus is, but I'm thinking about the framing. Like how am I gonna frame? What's a creative way to frame this character, right? On the shirt. So it kind of sits on an island on my t-shirt. Um, I'm thinking about like, do those graphics help me 
put Mickey in the foreground and front, in the middle ground, or in the background of the setting, right? So if I'm, if I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about, well, is there a sense of space that I can create? Because anything that looks 3D on a 2D flat t-shirt or poster or, or paper or anything flat, anything 3D on a flat 2D surface looks really interesting. That's just, our eye just gravitates to anything that looks 3D when it's not technically supposed to look 3D, right? So um, that is another factor. Like, is there, some, is, there a, is there a graphic here that I can maybe use like a foreground, a middle ground, background, or maybe Mickey's in the foreground and there's something in the background. So I'm thinking about that in the back of my mind, okay? And typically when it comes to the end, I talk about like the rule of odds, three of a, of a something, five of this or seven of that. Normally it's, it's a three or a five of, of certain elements. So I really at the heart of it, I'm kind of thinking about that in the back of my head. Like, what can I use as a background? Can Mickey maybe be in the middle and the foreground? And does this graphic help me kind of build a frame on the shirt so that it kind of sits like this cool little um, island, not literally not, obviously this is an island, but it kind of feels like it's contained within this shape. Does that make sense? And so I'm, I'm thinking about those t-shirt principles in that regard, okay? It's, it's like principles, it is principles of designs ultimately, but it's, um, I'm going a step deeper and creating a sense of a, a three-dimensional world as it were. And it doesn't have to be literal, um, I could literally create something that looks like middle ground, foreground, background in that regard. Okay, so um, does, I wanna make sure that that kind of makes sense because as I look, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about the principles, okay? So does that make sense just by a show of thumbs really quick? Like, okay, Almena's thinking focal and Almena's thinking like middle ground, background, foreground and something to kind of contain it. That's kind of like the overarching themes that he's thinking about. This is really what he's kind of trying to push is the, the frame, 3D space, focus, focal point, right? And that's really at the end of it, okay? So that being said, um, so, uh, uh, when I have that in mind, um, you know, those, those high level like uh, principles, then I'm gonna say, okay, well, which one can I do that? So as you can see right here in front of me, oh yeah, you know what? Like there's some spaces here. Uh, there's, uh, you know, on the left, we got this Halloween, sort of like cemetery and there's uh, trees and bats and we have the moon. Um, this looks this looks something interesting. This is this could definitely work as a potential thing for the character, right? I could see Mickey sitting in the front or in the foreground. Um, you know, we have a clear background. It's very vector, it's very interesting. I could possibly use something like that, you know? And so that's, this is a very developed concept, right? So I could possibly go with something like that as a particular download. Um, you know, I can maybe pull something like this t-shirt or this, this somewhat of a poster design and kind of let that kind of flow and, and we can download something like this and add it to the graphic, right? So that's a possibility. Um, you know, it doesn't even have to be fully developed. Like it could even be um, a series of really flat and, um, and just like two dimension, like one dimensional sort of silhouettes and outlines. And I can kind of work off of that. And so it could, I can use these elements to create a scene by myself. So it could be very developed or it could be something that you kind of piece together on your own. Um, and you could even trace these, right? Like you can even find pictures of things that are out there on the internet. And you can say, you know what? I really like, you know, that pumpkin or that house. And I'm just gonna uh, trace using the advanced method to trace like the pumpkin here on the left, right? So I'm just gonna try that and see what that looks like. So it's a, there's like a range of this as it were. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of jump in and then we'll kind of uh, take a little bit of peek of this. So um, let's take a look here. What's something that I could possibly work with? I think I was starting to gravitate to maybe, let's see. I think this trick or treat, happy Halloween sale thing was kind of interesting to me, but let's see if we can download it. Okay, I'm gonna free download on that. Okay, do I need to do that? Give an attribute, copy an attribute for sure. And then I made a download. Okay. I'm gonna click onto the file in my Chrome and I'm gonna expand it, unzip it, open it up, okay. So if you have like a Safari or a program, it kind of opens up. 
So I'm going to take this graphic and let me see if I can kind of show you my screen overall uh, to kind of give you a little bit of a feature there. So this is like my actual desktop screen ultimately that you're seeing there. Yeah, and it's sharing. And it should technically expand the archive and open it up. So I'm hoping it's going to do that. So let's see. And I'm going to downloads to see if it's in my downloads folder. Okay, looks like it's still unzipping and to kind of open up. Oh, there it goes, expanding. And here it is on my downloads. I'm going to double click the folder and it's going to give me a series of, of files, right? Like one of them is a JPEG, which is literally just a quick picture of it. But then right here uh, that I'm highlighting, it says 482.eps. That's an Illustrator file format, encapsulated postscript, it's called. And I can uh, pretty much right click and open this program, or I can go into Illustrator and say file open the file uh, through the file menu. I'm just going to go over here and right click and say, hey, you know what? Let's open this up in my Adobe Illustrator. 2021. I have like a couple older versions. And as I take that file, open it up and go to Illustrator, I start to see the folder open up here. And I want to make sure, oh, fonts. Yeah. It's letting me know that there might be some fonts missing. So I'm gonna just say, if you can find the fonts, activate the fonts, but if not, we can just kind of replace those and change them all and see if it does that. So for me, it didn't find the fonts, but I'm kind of not really interested in the font itself. I really just like sort of the, the graphics, but right away you can kind of tell that uh, these elements are vector, and I can start kind of adjusting them and moving them around. Okay. If a if a certain file is locked, I can even unlock it by right uh, right clicking it, or actually, to be more specific, um, I can unlock it by going to something called my layers panel. Okay. And this is where we get uh, start to see a couple of new things. Now right here in on the right hand side and has just kind of alluded to it it kind of looks like these two little squares overlapping if you're familiar with photoshop photoshop works by layers and believe it or not um, even illustrator works by layers as well so um, you can totally put one shape over another on one set on its own layer but you can actually kind of put layers over layers over layers and and they can and your illustration can actually get pretty complex so if I click onto these two squares over here, which is the layers panel, um, I'll start to see these three little areas kind of pop up. Okay, and let me go ahead and just kind of show that really quick. And I'm gonna to try to see, okay, let's see. I'm gonna detach it so then that way we can kind of uh, see it here. Okay. So, okay, so I'm going to draw the square and hopefully it'll target it a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to move it over here and uh, maybe move it a little bit smaller there. Okay, so right here, you'll notice that I have these three layers and there's like these little eyes to the left. If I turn it off and on, that means the graphic is there. If it has a lock, that means I can't, I cannot click on it. And if it's uh, if, it, if it doesn't have a lock, obviously I can click on it. But there's which means there's really nothing here to me to click on. If I unlock this layer and sort of click onto it, which is the background, I can now click onto it and retrieve all these like vector elements. So now I can move this graphic, and basically I can copy and paste it over into another T-shirt template, like this one. And now I can literally pull elements off the graphic, right? So I can take whatever I have available, I can 
delete that. Take these graphics. I can I can go. Um, okay, one second, me. Okay, I can take a second here and actually ungroup it. Okay, and I can click and say ungroup, and I can unlock all these like additional elements and pretty much deconstruct the graphic. So now, um, all of a sudden, I have all these elements that I can pull from. It doesn't have to be all of them. It could be maybe like one little feed, one at one side of it, right? So maybe I can take, you know, one graphic here to make it a little bit more asymmetrical, okay? So I'm going to take this little element here. Of course, I want to, you know, my focal point is going to be Mickey, right? So I want to make sure that I can take Mickey and um, work him into the graphic there. <laughs> so my apologies, I'm like multitasking over here. <laughs> and we can sort of kind of work the character. He's obviously looking a little bit too big for that, right? So, and I kind of am thinking to myself like foreground, middle ground, background, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm really thinking like, you know, can I set this up in such a way that maybe Mickey is in the background? And so I did. Sorry guys, give me just one second and let me go ahead and adjust this for a minute because I am about, so we have that going on, right? Okay, so graphics there i'm trying to get mickey in here right and i'm just kind of thinking to myself how can i frame how can i get a figure middle ground foreground middle ground background going in here i'm um, just kind of working the design as, as best as i can um there you know maybe that could possibly work as something um oh yeah the moon we need the moon so we need to get we'll try to use the the moon as a sort of a framing device so getting a little bit of that going t-shirts if i unlock the layer i can click on maybe the shirt and experiment with like a certain color maybe uh adjust the the highlight As best as uh, as best. So give me two seconds, okay? I'm sorry, guys. My apologies. So, and then kind of piecing it together and seeing if that works. And basically, just go following those principles that I was saying, right? Like, how can I create a middle ground? background, foreground, uh, you know, with this character, right? All right, so, and, you know, trying to get a little bit more asymmetrical with the graphic, and then maybe I'm gonna take these uh, tombstones and sort of arrange it to the front and bring Mickey into that like cemetery just a little bit more, right? Now granted, it's probably not gonna work so much uh, in like in a Disney environment because they're gonna be like, yeah, maybe the crosses, we might need to uh, not do that. And maybe we don't wanna do that so much um, with it, but you know, but we're just, this is, we're doing it for in class, right? But I'm sure they would probably get a little bit skeptical on just, things like that. 
but if there, if that was the case, then we would just basically like try to delete some of the religious marks and try to go a little bit more abstract on the tombstone if that's the case. But that's kind of that's kind of where we're going with that. Okay, so so looking asymmetrical, right off the center, you know, characters sort of embedded within that environment. Maybe that tree is going to be arranged over him to create a little bit more sense of depth, right? Almost as if he's hiding within that. Remove a little bit of that cross because um, we don't want to like uh, reinforce uh, or get too specific on any type of uh, religion, but we can probably play with like the tombstones and maybe kind of arrange it in such a way that he's there, right? And, and then in some way, shape or form, um, you know, we can add, Like those cloud-like elements uh, within the graphic to kind of piece that together, and then maybe add some a uh, little bit of the bats in the distance to kind of do that. But just getting that into the flow. Now again, you could totally recreate these elements. You could totally um, retrace them, right? Um, I'm, and that is totally okay. And build those together. And that's generally how these are elements were great were created, right? Like they basically at, were added in, as one. And again, um, rule of odds, putting in three bats, rule of odds, maybe adding a third little cloud and scaling that into the distance and kind of putting it to there, okay? Um, separating the layers. Um, to separate the layers there, Emily, um, I would basically open up my layers panel and the layers panel is not visible here. So let me go ahead and pull that up. But I would basically go to my like layer, excuse me. And under the layers panel, where's that lovely layers panel? So we can get that going. Let's take a look. Layers panel, layers panel, layers panel. Okay. Let's take a look here so we can pull it up. Let me take a moment to kind of get it on my uh, main monitor here so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, here we go. So view menu. Okay. And let's get the main desktop so you can see like the entire interface including the bar on top. So, oh, excuse me. Close that. Okay, so let's see. I want to go to uh, window uh, layers, and here's my layers panel. Now, on the layers panel, you'll notice that and I'll move this off to the side a little bit. Um, is that all the artwork is technically on one layer there? Shadows are on a different layer. Those shadows look terrible, but just for the sake of the demonstration, it's there. And then I have like the T-shirt as a different layer, right? You could technically put all the artwork in one layer, uh, as it were, but if you wanted to separate that uh, or get into that one layer even further, there's like a little arrow to the left of the um, white picture frame or icon where it says artwork here at the top. And if I click onto it, it kind of unfolds and it shows the specific elements within that layer. So it actually shuffles every element as layers within layers. Does that make sense? So Illustrator actually does think like a Photoshop um, because sometimes um, if you want to isolate a, a specific element, like let's say this tree, then it shuffles it for you. All you have to do is click onto it and then you can say, okay, highlight it. I can move it around or I can shut it off. Or let's say that tree is over Mickey. I can literally click the tree layer hold it and then move it underneath Mickey, which is, it's hard to see maybe on this small monitor, but I can move it underneath the Mickey layer and there he is, the tree has gone behind Mickey. Does that make sense? So Illustrator actually does create separations for you um, or you can create your own layers to separate those characters as well. This would be helpful if you're tracing Mickey, right? This will be helpful if you were tracing any graphic for that matter, and you can isolate and make adjustments as it were. Okay, does that kind of make sense a little bit, hopefully? And um, and do you kind of see how the layering can be used to kind of effectively help in your design process? Um, hopefully, it does. So then that way you can kind of like get a little bit of a, a visual for that. 
Um, arranging tabs. Um, you could, well, if you were to arrange tabs to move forward, I'm trying to think, they're asking about the question. Um, so for me, a tab is, a, is, is one file and a tab is another file, right? Um, if that's the case. So I'm looking, I'm thinking about it that way. If you're referring to layers, then um, I'm not too familiar about a tab with a layer in and of itself, but, but you can move tab, uh, certain tabs of different parts of it. But if it's referring to the graphic itself, I'm a little confused about the question. I think I, think I might need some clarification on that one. So uh, hopefully that kind of, if you can clarify, that would be great uh, there. But did, but did I answer that question, Emily, about separating the layers or, or just kind of like um, going to a sub layer and then breaking it down? I mean, you could technically um, separate the layers even further by creating your own layer. Like you could technically go to your layers panel and on the right hand side, these three little lines of the layers panel, you can actually click and say new layer or new sub layer. And when you click onto it, it'll say, hey, what do you wanna call this new layer? Maybe I'll maybe I want Mickey to be in his own layer, and I'll call that Mickey, but I still have to um, get him, edit, copy, delete him from one layer, and highlight the Mickey layer and say edit, paste, and then he's pasted in my Mickey layer, right? So. Um, and then after that, in answer to your next question, um, you can basically move those elements around upon clicking. So Illustrator is really smart. Um, even though you separated everything into its own layers, you don't have to you don't have to go Photoshop mode and highlight the layer. Does that make sense? Like um, you could just click onto the element and it automatically highlights in that element in that layer. Does that make sense? So it's smart enough to know which layer is which that you're trying to go to, right? The, the whole layering feature is simply used to organize um, the, the graphics so that they're not on just one page, right? But you can technically get away with it because my mind, like I like to put everything on one layer, but if I get a really complex graphic and I need to focus on certain things, um, I do tend to separate things from background, middle ground, foreground or by specific pose of character in and of itself. Does that kind of make sense? So I do break things down according to the principles, like focal point, that's its own layer. Background, that's its own layer. For middle ground, that's, that's its own layer. And then there's a bunch of el traced elements within those layers, okay? Th hopefully that helps a little bit and, and that makes a little bit more sense, okay? I try not to get too technical when it comes to the design process, um, what I'm really trying to do is just put everything in one layer and just arrange things accordingly, if that makes sense. So um, don't worry so much about the layers component. I know some of us kind of got it. What I would worry about is really just tracing the elements and creating the, the, theoret the theory side of it, which is putting the focal point, putting the design, allowing the design to kind of build in and of itself. Does that kind of make sense a little bit? So. I would work with one layer and then when we build that second t-shirt or, um, or modify the first one, then we can start putting things into, into its own individual layer. So I would probably say, um, let's get everything onto one layer, right? Um, and then shuffle all the elements within that, within that layer to create your design. Then we can separate afterwards um, where everything goes, hopefully. So. Um, just focusing on the design in and of itself is, is there, okay? And then borrowing images, if it's not letting you borrow those images, I would say try unlocking it because sometimes graphics are locked in downloaded files. So if I go edit unlock, I can unlock it. So there have been the times where files are locked. So you might have to go edit menu and unlock or select a layer and hit the little lock icon here in order for that design to lock and unlock. So look for the lock button if you, or the lock icon. If you do not see that, then technically, um, then technically uh, it's unlocked and it's not there. So where you see my like little icon flashing, 
Um, if you can't move it, try unlocking it if there's a lock. And if you try unlocking it, then technically you should be able to um, grab that graphic and element. And if it's not doing it, then it might be locked within a lock. And then for that, you have to go to edit, um, unlock, or um, edit, undo lock. And then that way it'll um, unlock it even further. Okay. Ooh, okay. I, I kind of hit you with a lot. I know I did. So, so, so at the end of the day, guys, um, it really comes down to the focal point, like really concentrate on the Mickey graphic because the fo focal point is, is still going to be key, right? Um, we People will still identify with the character. So the tracing of that character will still be the primary goal. But just know that there are elements and, and files available on the internet that are on Canvas, that are on the activity that we can go to, to pull and piece together to create our t-shirt, okay? And so that traumatically speeds up the process um, um, and allows us to focus on the design more so than the tracing. Does that make sense? So um, am, I, am, I, am I giving up quality just to, to, for theory? Totally. But um, no, actually, am I, am I trying to give up um, time on quality to focus on theory? Yes. And the, the way I did it, that was by supplying you guys with quality vectors so that you can bring it into elements, okay? but you can still trace it based off the, like the Mickey graphic. So why reinvent the wheel? Let's find things that we know we can trace after we do the Mickey graphic and move forward, okay? Okay, I hit you with a lot of information. I know it's, a, and we're nowhere at eight o'clock. So does that make sense? Does this help anybody in terms of their process? I hope if it does, a little thumbs up emoji, but did that help you in just kind of like formulating a plan and knowing where to go and just kind of piecing things together? Okay. So the good news is, is that, that, that there's, there's, there are things out there online that we can use for our t-shirt. Okay. How to get it there will, will, it is a bit of like a two-step process, but to transfer it over, it is possible. Okay. But first things first, let's just work on Mickey and the tracing. And once we're ready, we'll take a look at Canvas and look at the free sites and we'll download and then we'll try to transfer some of those vector elements and bring it into the design. Okay. Okay, great. And then, Jay, you had a question. I don't know if it's in the chat or not. Uh, do we have to do uh, three different designs for each of the shirts? Good question. Um, if you can, if you feel comfortable enough to, enough to go with three, I would say go for two, just for time's sake. Um, the first one is always a little rough in the beginning, and the second one, I always find students do a lot better. And then the third. So the more you do, the better you get, right? I would say let's go for two, just because um, you know we're at the beginning of the week. I would say let's focus on one design and then uh, maybe a second design just to kind of refine the skill and the technique, okay? And I think we'll go that direction. Have I seen students create two or, th two or three designs that are successful? Yes. Have I seen students create one that was uh, really good? Yes. I think at best, if we can get one solid design for the portfolio, we're in good standing, okay? But uh, let's go for two, and if you have time, aim for the three, so. Hopefully that helps. Okay. All right, looking good. Okay, so then I think we'll be good there. Um, we're at the top of the hour. Um, so let's do this. How many of you guys would uh, need some time to talk with me one-on-one? -on -one? All right, there. And if that's you to kind of answer specific questions for your element, um, maybe I can get a little thumbs up emoji because I'm willing to, allow if you want if for those that want to take a break you can totally take a break and then if you and i can work through the break if um uh, if you need specific questions to answer for your specific designs on it on it there okay. so anyone out there with the one-on-one -on -one? okay so if you have a specific question that you'd like to kind of ask or kind of cover meet me over in the one-on-one -on -one breakout room um and i'll answer any specific questions and i'll just kind of work through my break um, the rest of the class, if you guys want to take a break, feel free to take a break uh, for about five to 10 minutes and then continue with the tracing. But I'll work through my break so I can answer those specific questions on your designs that you might have. Okay, cool. All right. All right, guys. So let's do this. Um, join me in the breakout room if you have a minute and, um, and I'll try to quickly answer any specific questions that you might have. Um, and then the uh, rest of the class, feel free to take a break. And we'll continue with the tracing. I'll, I'll be with packaging at starting at about 8.15. Uh, 
and I'll get a review with them for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then I'll check back in with the class at about 9.15 after that, okay? So um, we'll go that direction. Cool. All right. Okay, guys, let me go ahead and go to that breakout room. And if you want to join me, feel free to join me over there and I'll answer those specific questions, okay? All right, I'll see you over there.
All right. Hey, guys. Good to see you. It's been a whirlwind of a day. <laughs> I wanted to check in to see how everybody's doing. So let me just jump in. Um, um, questions. Does anyone have any questions before we uh, dismiss you? I have a feeling there might be. So um, if you have to go, I totally understand. Thank you for sticking around. But I wanted to check in. Um, are you guys looking OK? And how are the graphics coming along? If you can maybe type in what the status is of your graphic, black base, I'm drawing the, the you know pants, shorts, gloves, or I'm on the t-shirt getting in the background. Where would every where are you guys currently and how did you leave off? And you can voice it in or type it in the chat. So um, go ahead and let me know where you are on that and then we'll take a look at it. Okay. So how are we doing so far in the design? Okay, Chris, you're on black bit. Oh, actually, this is from 715. Let me go down the list. My apologies. Right there. Okay, so a few of us disconnected, so that's good. Um, Ellie, are you doing okay so far? Is everything looking okay on the design? Not, and you can type it in the chat or you can even voice it in. And that's okay too. Or Emily, you're doing okay over there as well? Okay, you're cool. Okay. All right. And then uh, and then Chris, I know you're working on that. Okay, you're okay, perfect. Um any background developments yet? Or are you uh, or are you guys still on the overall body and the tracing? Kind of curious to see. Oh, more work to do on the Mickey. Okay. Yeah, Mickey will definitely make everyone grow up or feel like a grown up. Um, it does take time. Um, I'll say that for sure. So, um, but as long as those details are coming in quite nicely, we should be okay, okay? All right, and then, uh, and then Emily, are you still on the body or, or more of the background? Oh, you said you were on the body too, okay. Yeah, the, the tracing does take, a, does take some time and I'm, always have to remind myself to like be quiet <laughs> and let you guys just trace away. So, um, but I think you ladies had a, oh, okay. Working on the shirt, more careful with the tracing. Yeah, and, and take the time to be careful with the tracing because, because Mickey is a focal point, that should be sort of the, the general rule on anything, right? If something's gonna be a focal point, um, there should be a bit more time and attention put onto that because of that very reason, right? And then when it's a character, this this um, person or this creature with eyes and emotions that looks human-like, right? Um, that it's a uh, it's that much more uh, unique in that sense, right? So um, people love these characters, and so if they're it, so they they have a high expectation of the of the drawing of the character and how it comes out. So um, if you're putting in time to trace and it's looking clean, that's a good sign because we do as designers um, and even as, as people that hire, we do kind of look at the details and we're very aware of those details because we've been there, done that and we put in the time for tracing, okay? And then Emily, you're done with the Mickey working on the shirt. So that's great. Um, I'll just gotta, uh, do you wanna surprise me on theme or do you kind of, uh, do? You, do you have a theme that you're working on right there? I'm kind of curious on your theme because I feel like you can even break some, you can go, I don't know, at this point, I, I, it could be anywhere at this point, your, your theme, um, as long as it looks somewhat dated. Um, that could be cool too, to kind of see that in, in process. Um, but is this helping you too, Emily? Are you feeling like you're getting to a point where you want to be in your original goals when you first started with the class? I know you had said like, I really want it to look to a level that like looks like this and you're kind of moving in that direction already. So hopefully you're feeling that way. Like, oh, okay. Like I totally am starting to see how like how much time goes into the detailing and how that detailing translates into the design. So um, hopefully you feel that way and you're starting to kind of get a little bit more of a greater sense of, uh, of how that, like the professional work looks versus, right? versus like the introductory stuff. So hopefully you feel that way too. Or you're starting to feel like you're getting to a better place with that. Okay. 
All right, very cool. So, so guys, really quick, I know we're at 954. So thank you so much for, for putting in that time this evening. Um, again, my apologies. Um, it's been a, quite a hectic week um, with the funeral, with things happening and just people in and out of the house. Um, it will level off, um, believe me. Um, so uh, we will get there. And, um, you know, I just, wanna make, I just wanna make sure that you're getting as much time and much support as possible. So there's a lot of shuffling going on back and forth here and there. So thank you for your patience and for just allowing me to, to help you out. Okay. All right. Yes. Have a good night, guys. You are officially dismissed. Um, and we will see you on Thursday. Okay. Be safe. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.